What's up everybody? Welcome back to the Danair channel. In today's video, I'm gonna mess around with the Project Rescue Sierra truck. My ultimate goal is to put in a like a nice intake, long tube headers, and a nice cat back exhaust system so this thing runs and sounds really good. So that's the end game. In the meantime, I wanna have a little fun with this and just see if I can see any noticeable or measurable difference in the zero to 60 time, starting with messing around with the intake, maybe muffler delete or straight through muffler and then eventually go into like a performance exhaust system with long tube headers and a nice cat back exhaust system so that's kind of the idea and the plan so let's get a baseline of a fully stocked truck zero to 60 time and then modify the intake and then do a muffler delete or a straight through muffler and just see if that does anything to the zero to 60 time and then we'll do a follow-up video at some point and we'll start messing around a little bit more with the exhaust system so we'll go from there so with this video right here it's going to be a free to very cheap zero to 60 improvement hacks i guess so anyway let's get right into it enjoy the video Second attempt. roughly nine second zero to 60 because it's not bad for as big of a truck as this is I'm gonna try this one more time okay last attempt and I'm gonna try to do this without spinning the tires slow start I really don't want to roast the tires it'd be easy to do with this being so light in the back now what I want to do is modify the intake so that we allow more air to get to the engine instead of having that stock air box that's like breathing in through a straw so we're gonna try to give this truck as much air as we possibly can by just modifying the air box a lot of guys will do cold air intakes which 
I'm not opposed to. I think that'd be cool. So money is one thing, one reason why I don't do a cold air intake. And two, those high flow filters that go on the end of those cold air intakes, you have to have a special oil in them. And as dusty as the road is that we live on, uh, I'd be cleaning that thing constantly. So, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do a modification to the air box and have that be my DIY redneck cold air intake. So I'm gonna go up here and take care of that right now. So again, this is a stock setup for this 5.3 and we're gonna go ahead and remove this air box. And I show you just how much air gets into this thing. It doesn't seem like much. Take this box out and air filter. Cold air intakes are definitely a good way to boost a little bit of horsepower possibly, but mostly fuel mileage and that kind of thing. So it definitely helps to open it up. You can think of an engine like an air pump. The easier the air goes in and out, the more efficient and more powerful the engine can be. Disconnect. Top end, got a nice clean air filter, brand new. Okay, so this is the air box. We've got a hole right here that lets air in. We've got a smaller hole down underneath it. And basically, the air going into your engine is coming from like inside of your fender well. And there's mass airflow sensor screen. So that can be a little bit restrictive there too. So I'm probably gonna take this out as well. There are two pins that hold this bottom box in. I've already disconnected them. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this bottom part out. So that's it. That is the bottom part of your air box. The only air coming into your engine is through these two holes. The top one's fairly decent size. The bottom one's a lot more restricted, but a decent amount of air. Coming in around the headlight assembly, getting into your fender and coming through here. So. So it's kind of like what I mentioned before, it's like breathing through a straw while you're trying to run. This air filter is actually quite large, so quite a bit of air can go into this engine. So I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do to modify this bottom air box. Anything underneath the filter is gonna be the dirty air. Anything on top of this is the clean air. So we're not gonna modify the top part of this thing. We're only gonna modify the bottom. So like the cooking show where they put something in the oven and they go to the other oven and pull out the finished product, this is what I did to the air box on my Silverado. Took a half inch drill bit and drilled all these holes all around this thing. Anywhere I can get my drill bit to go that wasn't on a main structured part of the box, I drilled the holes. So we should get a ton more air to flow in through this thing. So you tell me, the proof's in the pudding. Let's see if this actually helps the zero to 60 time. So now we're going to remove this tray. There's 10 millimeter bolts all over this thing. And I'll show you why we're doing that in here in just a second. So we've got all the bolts out. So in addition to getting the air through the fender like normal, removing this tray is going to give us all that air right there. This air box will sit right here just fine. It won't be strapped down per se, but it's not going anywhere. All right, so I took a second to kind of dig around this edge and I pulled this screen off. I know this is in here to stop any big materials from flying into your engine. So long as the airbox is tight and the filter is in place, nothing big should get through this thing. And I've seen other guys do this that live on country roads and stuff, and they've said they've had zero problems with this. So I'm going to give it a shot too. So we'll throw this all back together. All right, so that's all wrapped up. Let's get back out on the road and see if this does any difference to our 0 to 60 time.
spun. So I'm having a hard time right here. I'm not getting a very good launch. Spun the tires a couple times. Anyway, it doesn't seem like there's that much difference. I wasn't really expecting to see a real big difference, but I was hoping that there would be some nominal differences. So I'm gonna chalk this one up to possibly driver error, and uh, it just really doesn't make that big of a difference, I guess. Probably see a lot more change in fuel economy, possibly. All right, here, hopefully I won't spin the tires. Good run and the best time yet, 8.57. So I'm going to say that there is some change, nominal power change. The more I go into modifying this thing with uh, exhaust, I do want to do headers at some point, but I'm going to put a Flowmaster or a small little cherry bomb on this thing, a glass pack or something, and uh, see if I can do a little less restrictive exhaust flow at the muffler. See if that does anything. So, one thing I did notice the engine sounded a little bit louder to me, like, like it was breathing a little bit better. Yeah, I think it sounded a little bit better to me. Yeah, it wasn't like just a huge difference, but there was a difference. I mean, I could tell there was a difference in the engine noise. It sounded a little healthier. Is a heavy muffler. Whew, that muffler's got some girth. Six. Two six. That's better. Best we could do was 8.2. Okay, looking at the tail of the tape, we can see this chart here. I've got it broken down into the different kinds of modifications I've done, and then the times for each of the runs plus the average. You can see the stock average was 8.92 seconds. 
The airbox mod average was 8.86 seconds, which is actually a difference of six hundredths of a second. And then the modified airbox plus the eight inch glass pack averaged out to be 8.55 seconds, which is 0.31 seconds over just the airbox mod, which is 0.37 over just a stock truck. Now, if you look at the best runs that we did, the stock was 8.66. The modified airbox best was 8.57. It's a difference of nine hundredths of a second. And then modified airbox plus the eight inch cherry bomb glass pack, 8.26 six seconds which was a difference of 0.31 over just the airbox modification and overall it was a 0.4 second differential over stock so this chart makes it pretty interesting to see the difference in the grand scheme of things it's not a big difference overall but it is a difference and it's kind of exciting to see that doing some free or very cheap modifications to your truck can improve the performance so like I mentioned, I do plan on putting some long tube headers on here, maybe a nice cat back exhaust system. So it's pretty cool that I got this data log with all the modifications I've done so far. It'd be pretty exciting to see how much more improvement I can get over adding some more modifications to this truck. So anyway, I look forward to doing that sometime in the future.